Hey there, fellow CAD monkeys. Time for another gut wrenching episode of AutoCAD 101. Okay, really not bad. Um, for today's assignment, we've already been drawing objects for a while now. Today, we're going to learn how to modify some. We've actually been doing that already. Um, if you notice, look at the draw uh, tool palette. There's the modifies right next door, and we've already been doing some of these. There's copy. Um, there's erase. We've made offsets. We've made fillets. Um, so we've already done some of this stuff. But we're going to go through move, which is really like copy. It just doesn't keep a version, of, you know, one of the things behind it. We're going to look at trim. Um, there's also extend. If we click down here, you notice trim and extend are this, actually the same command, sort of. And they aren't really, but they work exactly the same. Um, we're not going to mess with um, uh, copy per se. There's some other options I want to talk about with copy. We're not going to mess with it too much. We're going to make some copies just for practice. Rotate, we're doing another lecture. Um, we're going to do stretch because it's got some real issues that take a while to get used to. And there's also scale. Um, and scale and rotate have an op a, ref a reference option that we're going to talk about. Um, and then there's array. Array makes cop uh, multiple copies in the X, the Y, and the Z option. I'm going to show you some things on that on the next lecture uh, because AutoCAD, someone at AutoCAD had their head up their backside. And change the way it was formatted and we'll show you how to get back to where it's a good format but we'll talk about that next time um you notice we've got more things down here in modify and we'll talk about all this stuff but for right now open your the drawing either a new drawing because you saved to the autocad dwt you'll now have the layers or in case that didn't work because they may not want you write to that file um open the the other file that we did the layers in and do a save as and called it assignment six. Um, you should have a title block and you should have those ADT layers. We're going to draw on some of those ADT layers today. Um, but first we're going to change what we've already drawn to put it on a layer. But the first thing we need to do is we're going to put those on the title block layers, which you may not have. Um, we're going to create a ZTB BD, which is basically Z title block border layer. And we're going to make one more new one, we're, which is going to be called, oops, where's my new layer button? I can tell I'm not used to this interface. Um, crud. I don't see it. Well, anyway, here I'll make a layer real quick. Dash layer. Because you can do all this from the command line, just like you can do it from the pull down. You notice we have a new option. Um, we want the name for the new layer to be ZTBNO. We want its color to be red, which is one. And we have to tell it ZTBNO. Whoops. That's why doing it with that command interface is better. Um, and we'd want to do the line width, which is LW, and put 0 0.25 millimeter. Been a lot easier to just go layer and click the little button here. Let's see if I got it right. Oops, I didn't get the 0.25 right somehow. I typed something wrong. I probably put the MM and I didn't need to. But just to show you that there's lots of ways to do things that don't involve the dialog boxes and everything else. You don't have to use them. Can, stuff can be done from the command line. We'll talk about using some of the dash um, prefixes to get commands to work from the command line later. But All right. We're going to take the lines and we're going to move them. Instead of layer 0, we're going to put them on the ZTB BD layer. Click. Ooh. And we'll do that for each of our objects. Wow, that's going to take a while, isn't it? 
Sorry, I'm about to sneeze, so I'm trying to pinch my nose to make myself not sneeze. So I probably sound weird. There's a command called properties, or dmodify, that you actually do the exact same thing. Um, and what, well here we'll start it, prop is the shortcut, but the command's properties. And it brings up this dialog box. These dialog boxes, if you pick, you can drag them around. They'll, if you don't watch it, they'll try to attach to one side or the other. If they ever do that, just kind of grab them and drag them away. Ugh. And they won't. If you have multiple screens, you can put these on any of the screen you want. Doesn't have to, notice it doesn't have to be inside the AutoCAD window. Um, and now if we grab a whole bunch of things, you notice it'll tell us, oh, you have 14 things selected. Um, so at this point, oh, well, we'll pick just the rectangles and then we can change them. Um, and we could do that. We could come in here and very carefully grab with our crossing window to just grab the rectangles. And notice it actually tells us we've got four, uh, seven polylines. It doesn't even call them rectangles. It just says, no, these are polylines. Um, and at this point with layer, we could come down here and say, we want these on ZTBBD. And they're all there. But let's undo that. Watch this. If we grab everything, one of the things we can do with this down arrow here is we can go, oh, we want the text to be on ZTB in O, and we want those polylines, and you notice it's only dealing with these one at a time, we want the polylines on the title block border layer. And you'll now notice that these are indeed on on the red ZTB and O layer, and the other is on the other. This is called a filter. There's actually a command called filter. There are a number of commands that do similar things like filter. Um, and we'll talk about those more layer, later. But this can be a real handy thing to have up on your, your screen. We'll talk about it more in a little bit because we're going to draw some polylines. And what happens a lot of time with a polyline, you'll draw a polyline, and you'll go, Oh, man, I'm supposed to make that have a width of X. Well, there is a way to edit polylines. It's P-Edit. And you can come in here and highlight the thing and hit W for width. And let's say we make it too much width. So we could have done that. Let's undo. But if you have this property dialog box up, or you start it real quick, and you click, we can set, because that's a polyline, we can set its global width to 2 and that's a little bit faster than going through all those steps with p edit so don't forget that you have this option um, with these so if you ever draw something on the wrong layer you can fix that if you've got it with the wrong line type because we can override the line types here so that they're not by layer we could put them to make it have a center line type we could change its color um, whoops that's layer we could change its color We'll make it green. Um, so you can do a lot of these things. Generally, we want objects that we draw to be colored by layer. Um, the reason for that is when we send stuff to a consultant, like let's say I sent the architectural drawings to a structural engineer, they're going to take all of our stuff and they'll go into the layer dialog box and they'll grab all the layers. They'll click the top one hold their shift down, click the bottom one, and they're going to wipe out all these colors and put them kind of a gray color so that all the architectural stuff kind of fades out and all of their stuff is really bold. Um, so it's very obvious what the um, structural stuff, information on the sheet is. Um, if we do this and everything turns gray, that's fine. If we've overridden all these colors, that stuff won't turn gray. Here, we'll just do it real quick. Let's just grab all this stuff. Um, and, oops. Now let's go to layer, whoop, layer. I can type, really, I can't. Let's, we'll turn all these to like this gray 253. So let's grab all these layers. So, whoosh, no, stop it. Shift 253. Yay, joys and yellings. You notice everything's gray except the one I overrode. You, If you override a lot of stuff, 
and your engineer comes to do this, they will have really, engineers have a very colorful language. Um, and they're not usually um, bashful about expressing it. So you probably ought to keep in mind when you're overriding uh, uh, colors, it better be for a reason. Um, just to let you know. Let's go ahead and we'll highlight this and we'll hit E for erase. That's one thing you might notice about AutoCAD. Um, I can go E for erase and pick the objects or I can highlight those objects and hit E for erase. Same with most AutoCAD commands will work this way. So you have the, uh, it's called a noun verb or, or a verb noun input and AutoCAD can do either. All right, so we've got this. Let's go ahead and hit a save, just to be on the safe side. And now we're going to draw some objects. Let's scroll down to the next page. We we're going to draw a couple rectangles. Um, one we're going to put on ADTOT. So come up here to layer, scroll down, ADTOT. Pook. That's now our current layer. So we'll go rectang. Our EC is shortcut. We want it at one comma two for the first corner. And from there to come to, yay, ooh ah, ooh ah. Now we're going to switch to ADTMS. And we're going to draw another one at 4, 2. And it is also 2, 2. Yay. Now we're going to use the move command. The shortcut for move is M. And we're going to move it up 3 inches. So 3. Make sure your ortho's on. Now we're going to copy this one up three. So copy. CO or CP are the shortcuts for copy. And we'll copy it up three. Yay. Exact same steps. One keeps the original, one doesn't. That's the only difference. Um, now we've done fillet before, but let's go do fillet. So fillet, F's the shortcut. Um, we need to set the radius because the radius is set to zero. We want the radius in this case to be a quarter inch. Sorry, it's probably kind of little on your screen. Quarter inch radius. So we'll hit R 1 slash 4 or 0.25 either. And we're going to pick this corner and we're going to pick this corner. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Now one thing we haven't talked about here. Let's put him off of the screen for now. One thing we haven't talked about is fillet has a number of options here. A new polyline radius trim multiple. Um, let's look at what some of those do. Um, let's go fill it. We'll keep the same radius, but if I hit T for trim, um, and we'll hit, that's what we're used to. Let me undo that. Now let's do it. Fill it. Radius is fine. Trim. Let's click no trim and watch what happens. It leaves the line, but still, but creates that radius very rare that we well I don't think I've ever used this option um, and I've been doing this since dinosaurs walked the earth so that tells you something but it's there it's an option if you ever need it one that is helpful especially since we drew this as, with the rectangle command fill it radius is a quarter inch we want that but let's hit P for polyline and now if we pick on it it'll do all four corners at once ooh kind of handy um so that's like if we were making a, a steel pipe shape or something and then we're coming here and offset let's say an eighth of an inch there's our our steel tubes section um, so we use this kind of a not a lot you'll notice as it offset it made the inner radius smaller it did not do that um that's the polyline option Multiple option will let you keep walking around. Uh, here, let me undo that. And we'll do it with the multi. Uh, the, uh, all right. Although I don't use it very often. Fill it. Uh, I can type really. Um, let's hit multiple as an option. Um, pick, pick. Notice we're still in the command. Pick, 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 pick. You get the, you get the gist of it. Um. A similar command to this is called chamfer. Rather than creating radiuses, chamfer creates a little diagonal line between the two lines you've made. 
by assigning a distance of distance up and a distance down or a distance sideways. This is, you know, basically you got a distance one and a distance two. I have never, ever had to use this. Um, however, concrete columns typically don't have sharp edges like this because they can get hit and chip off. So what they'll do is they'll put a one inch by one inch chamfer on concrete columns. Um, so it's just got a diagonal corner. So there's no sharp edge. Um, so we'll do that with uh, concrete columns all the time when you're drawing. So let's go chamfer. Um, in this case, we want distances um, to be one inch by one inch. So you'd hit D. There are, I've already done it once. So normally this distance comes up at zero. But we'll hit D for distance. And one always asks you for another one. So one. Now, just like polyline, you can pick the two lines and it makes chamfer. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Um, now, I put one here inch here. I'm going to have to fix that. Oops. Sorry, I'll go fix that and re remake this uh, sheet view wall. That's too big because we want to do all four corners. That's too large. So let's undo. So chamfer distance. We'll set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And now if we pick it, that's really what we're supposed to get. Just like, um, um, just like fillet. Let's start that again. Unfortunately, since I undid, I'm going to have to do the distances again. And we've got a P line option. So P, pook. So that's one of the ways we make concrete columns all the time. It works really well. Um, let's see. Probably a good idea to save again. Now we're going to draw on ADTMB. Oops. And we're going to draw a polyline um, from 1, 3. It's going to be 5 inches long. We want a width of 0.25. So, one comma three. Probably nice if I started the polyline command. PL is a shortcut. Um, so one comma three. And at this point, I should hit the W for width. But let's assume for a moment that I forget. That's not one comma three. Ah, I screwed up. Well, this will work fine. It's supposed to be two comma three. Another thing I need to fix. Um, so polyline two comma three whoops nope polyline one comma four there we go i mean we're gonna want it to be five inches long but let's assume i forget and i hit five and i'm like oh i forgot to do the width um i can use p edit p edit pick line and go to width and tell it I want a width of 0.25. Or I could have highlighted the object and done it here. Global width, 0.25. So either way works. Obviously, it's better, but don't draw it. Ah, oh, I messed up and erase it or undo. You know, there's always ways to fix things. Let's take it a step further. Um, if you ever have a polyline, you don't want to be a polyline, like a rectangle or something like that. The command to get rid of them to is explode. Um, now it's just a line. It turns polylines into lines. Let's copy. Oops. Let's copy this up real quick. If we explode that, now we have four separate rate arcs and four separate lines. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Sometimes you want to do this, sometimes you don't. Um, but if you actually, let's say we started this and we accidentally drew this with a line instead of a polyline. Oh, so now I need to erase and start over. Not necessarily. Let's go back to P-Edit. 
if you pick a line or pick something that's not a polyline with p-edit, it's going to tell you, hey, this isn't a p-edit moron. Do you want to turn it into one? Okay, it does say moron. I, if I wrote the text, it would say moron. But it says, hey, do you want to turn it into one? Yes. We hit Y. Now we can assign the width 0.25. So p-edit can be very useful. We can also use p-edit to join uh, line segments um, to turn them into polylines. So if we have, let's just take some lines real quick. We, as long as you, they do share the same endpoint, we can go p-edit, click on it. Yes, we do want to turn it into one. And then we have this join, join options down here, join, J, and then go pick the lines. You got to pick the one you started with too, or otherwise it won't do anything. And as long as they save, share, shared the same endpoint, this will work. So let's go ahead and hit with 0.25. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Um, let's erase that. Since erase is one of the, whoops, erase is one of the modify commands we should be using. We're not going to copy this thing up two inches, four inches, six inches. So copy. Um, little different input than SketchUp because in SketchUp you do the first one two inches and then it highlights this line and you do two, 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 two. Um, AutoCAD's not like that. It's always thinking back to the original or original object. So two, then four, then six. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change layers once again. We're going to go to one of those non-plot layers, the ZNP1, well, not one of those, we only have one. And we're going to draw a line, whoops, let's get this out of the way, um, from this midpoint to this midpoint. Sounds a lot more confusing in the, in the instruction, sorry about that. It's a line, and this is actually a line, not a polyline. Just click up. Um, and now we're going to copy that three inches over here. So copy three inches make sure your ortho's on and we're done yay now we're going to use the trim command we don't want this side of the line everything on this side of the line we don't want here so we'll go trim tr is a shortcut the first thing it asks you for is cutting edge most people want to pick this thing because that's what they want to get rid of and they just fight and they just pick it pick it and that's not what the cutting edge is. The cutting edge is where you are going to define this line to stop now. This is that cutting edge. So we hit enter because we don't need any more. You can pick as many as you want, but we only want the one. Now you get to pick the part you want to get rid of. And you notice it'll kind of highlight what it's going to do. So click, click. And we click on this one and we're like, it's not working. Why is it not working? So we hit enter just to trim off these two. With the trim command, you'll notice you had fence, crossing project, edge, erase, undo. Um, what this edge option does, so trim, that's our cutting edge, enter. Now if we hit E, it gives us the option to extend or no extend. No extend is the default, which means if this line does not cross that object, it's not going to trim it off. But if we hit E, and I leave mine on this setting all the time, now if we click these, it'll click that too because it essentially takes that cutting that cutting line and makes it go infinitely in both directions. I leave this on all the time. I like this option. But let's go back before we've done this. Let's start trim again. Another option. Um, and you got to be a little careful with this. Um, you notice you got um, fence. If we hit F right now, we can run a line through these and it'll trim them all off. Oops, I went all the way back to where my no extend didn't work. Oops. Also trim, cutting edge, E for edge, extend. There we go. Now fence, and we can draw a line through here and it gets them all. Oops, it also got our rectangles. Oh no. So we undo draft. Uh, we'll pick these manually. We can use our fence up here. Now, you don't actually have to hit F for fence. Watch what happens if I just click a point off an object and drag it through. Oh, 
but usually, oh, my no extend still on all these undos. I'm messing myself up. Um, so trim, um, cutting edge, um, edge, extend. I could have do the F, but you'll notice if you just run a rectangle off by not picking on an object to start with, it treats it just like a fin. So you actually don't have to use the F option. Um, there'll be times where you don't want to use it. Like, oops, I got these. I didn't mean to freeze these. I mean, uh, trim off these. But speaking of freeze, let's do that. Let's here, let me copy. Well, um, let's if I undo it though, I'm going to, well, we'll just undo it. God, I'm going to be get, getting a lot of practice typing that E for extend now. So trim, let's just get it done. And I'll just save it. So E, extend, and we're just going to end there. So now if I undo, at least it's, we, we're still good. Um, one of the things we can do is, like, oh, I don't want to trim those. Well, fine, let's not. Let's go freeze that layer. If we freeze this right now, now they won't get trimmed when we go trim, cutting edge. And we come back up here to layers and go, oh, there's the one we froze. So we unfreeze that and there's our stuff again. So this is one of the reasons that freezing and thawing layers is handy. Um, was that any harder or any easier than just clicking these two lines? No, but uh, if you got a lot of stuff, it can be really, really handy. Just another way to do stuff in AutoCAD. Lots of ways to do things in AutoCAD. None of them are right, none of them are wrong. Um, some may be more time efficient, and that's where your boss is going to start looking over your shoulder. And that's what he, he wants. He wants efficiency. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't like using these pull downs. Like, they, let's say I wanted to go draw a donut. Um, I can type DO real quick from the command line. Going up here and click and click and doing this kind of stuff. I find very time consuming and I also find it very bad on your body because you're using that mouse over and over and you're going to get carpal tunnel. Um, so I think the command line is a much better way of doing things. But we'll talk about that more later when we learn how to make our own command alias, our own shortcut commands. Um, all right. Extend is really similar to trim. Uh, same idea. Instead of asking for a cutting edge, it'll ask for a boundary edge. So we'll type extend. That's the boundary edge, the edges that we're going to extend things to. And just like trim, you pick your objects. And you'll notice that it, that edge option defaults to, it. it's like I said, it's such a close command. They use the same edge option. So even though it didn't, um, this doesn't go all the way up here, it's using that same um, extended infinitely long line to extend to. Yay. Um, I think in your case, undo, I think I actually had your assignment. Oops, I just did extrude. That's a 3D command, sorry. Um, it, I, it has extend the ZMP1 line up to this one. Um, anyway, that's the extent that we're going to do an assignment today. So I'll shut up and let y'all uh, go try it.